to Designs by Diane. Today we're going to make a rag quilt. They're nice and snuggly and warm and they work up so quickly. Come along and let's get busy. The quilt that I have here today is made of an animal print. It just was an all over print that I liked. And I cut the squares and the fleece that's on the back. This is the fleece showing through. It's got green fleece on the back. Um, I cut them with an AccuCut machine, and I will explain that a little bit later. But you're going to put layer your uh, fleece and your fabric, and sew two of them together with the raw edges on the front. And that's the fun part, because then it starts to fringe, and the more you wash it, the fringier it gets, so it gets better and better. Um, I have one I made for my husband out of two layers of cotton. There's cotton on the front and cotton on the back. But I put batting in the center. And I did not have my AccuCut machine, so I cut my squares of fabric six inches and my batting four and a half. And I took a three quarter inch seam around here and fringed about a half an inch of it. Every time you wash it, it just gets fluffier. My husband loves this. It's kind of like being under an animal skin. It's just heavier than a regular quilt. But the nice thing about this, now on this one I X'd to hold the batting in place. On the other one I did not use batting. The fleece on the back was enough. So I had cotton on the front, fleece on the back. So there's no quilting to it. You just sew it together and go. So if you need something for a quick gift or something, a charity quilt, that you want to not have to take to a long armor or not have to fight your machine over, this is the way to go. They're nice and cuddly and fun. The one that I made, we're going to make today is seven blocks across and nine this way. So we'll need 63 blocks. The pattern we have for today, um, all I needed was squares to know how many to do. And there are seven across and nine down. So we're going to need 63 of the top fabric and 63 of the fleece fabric that's going to go on the back. So we already know what we need. But when we do our quilt, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more. This quilt has got butterflies on it. And I just made this up with something on it. I want to make sure that you know when you do your fabric, if you're sewing them together and it is directional. In other words, if we want all of our... Uh, butterflies flying upwards. We want to keep them all that way. So pay attention to your uh, fabric, your pattern, and, and make sure if it has a directionalness uh, to it that you do go by them. Now the blocks that I'm going to cut out with my machine are going to look like this. They are going to have, they're going to be eight and a half inches on the very outside. Six and a half will be solid in here, and there will be an inch on the top and the bottom and both sides that is already fringed. I'm not going to have to cut the fringe on this quilt. Now, if you use uh, scissors or rotary cutters to cut this out, you're going to have to go back afterwards and clip this fringe, and they make some special scissors for that, or you can use, um, I used blunt nose children's school scissors, uh, like the preschooler scissors that they sell. They worked very well for me, but find what works well for you. And also, as you're working on the quilt, every evening I would cut whatever I had done that day. I could cut up to the next of the last row. I didn't want to cut the last row. But I would cut up to where I was going to add to it later. And that way, at the end, I didn't have the whole quilt to do. So that makes it a little easier. Now, I want to show you the fabric. This is the square, and let me zoom out just a little bit so you can see this. This is a square of fabric that I cut on my machine. And I think you can see on the top here, it has the fringe on it already. Um, I'm not going to have to cut any of this fringe. It's just going to work well for me. The fleece that I cut also has the fringe already cut. So I'm ready to just sew if you use this machine. A lot of your sewing, your quilt shops will have these machines that they will allow you to use if you're their customer or for a small fee every year. So find out if there's one in your area. Also, a lot of people buy their own personal machine. They have the Go Cutters um, that are nice if you want to own your own. This is the actual die or knife that goes with my AccuCut machine. You can see that the solid is a solid piece. It's not going to cut anything here. 
But on the four sides, you have the knives that are going to cut the fringe. And then the solid line on the outside. This one also cuts the notch where the corners are so that you don't have that uh, odd amount that you've got to figure out what to do with. This is the side that you use to cut with. Um, I can layer 10 layers of fabric. So I will get 10 squares every time it goes through. Or I layer three layers of my fleece at a time and run it through. So cutting this out using the machine is very, very simple. If you're using a rotary cutter, go ahead as many layers as you're comfortable. Stack them and cut them and you can still get this done in short time. To make this quilt, you're going to need your sewing machine and hopefully a walking foot. If you have a machine that has the walking foot built in, there are some uh, brands that come with that feature. It is great. If you don't, if you can get a walking foot, it's going to help feed these layers through better, but you can do it on a sewing machine. So um, we'll just adjust it as we go and, and see how this goes. Um, for this quilt, which is seven across and nine down, you will need, if your fleece is 60 inches wide, you will need about three yards of fleece. Add a little in there if you're going to use the AccuCut or the Go Cutter because you're going to have to cut your strips a little wider. And for your fabric, 42, 43 inch wide fabric, you're going to need about four yards, but add some in there. Again, I said if you're going to use the cutter because they do require you to cut your strips a little wider and then fan fold them on the die. So three yards of fleece and four yards of fabric if we're going to cut with rotary cutters and a little bit more than that if you're going to use the cutter. Uh, we need our sewing machine. We do not even need an iron this time unless your fabric is very, very wrinkled. We don't need an iron for this quilt. Um, this quilt is just very user friendly. We're going to enjoy making it. Um, I have my quilt cut out. All I have to do is put my squares together now. So let's get busy. To get ready to sew my blocks together, I'm going to layer one of my fabric blocks with one of my fleece blocks. Now your fleece may be different on each side, so always have the same, uh, there's a rough side and a smooth side, whichever one you want outside. Make sure the other one is against your fabric. So I've got fleece and fabric, and line up the edges, your notches, if you cut it with a cutter, you're going to have this nice notch to line up, line your edge up, make sure the other end is going to match to the, you know, pretty good for right now. Okay, on your other one, match your notches on either end. Both of these are good side up. If I flip them around, you can tell the kitty cats are going the same way. Um, and I have different kitty cats to a certain extent in each block. You don't want the same block next to each other if your uh, print repeats. So I've got them both oriented to me, fabric on top, fleece on the bottom. I'm going to put them together, fleece side to fleece side and I'm going to match up the top notch and start sewing until I get to uh, the bottom, make sure the bottom is even and we will have to cut this after each seam. We won't be able to chain these through like we usually do. But get your top edges even uh, of your notch and your right edge, get your right edges even and your bottom, line it up pretty good and then I've got my machine set to where my uh, walking foot, if I let the edge of it go along the bottom of these fringes, the, the farthest end cut of the fringes, my needle will be about a quarter inch in from there. So that's good. We want to sew all of our seams at that same dimension. So we'll get started now. I have my pieces just as I left them. I've got fabric good side up, fleece bad side to the bad side of the fabric, and then another set of that sandwich. So I've got fabric, fleece, fleece, fabric. I'm going to start it under my walking foot, and you really at least need a walking foot for this. Line it up with about where the seam would be on the other side. Now, you can make your seam, uh, your stitch length a little bit longer here because it's going through a lot of layers. So test your machine. If it tends to want to really sew tight just because of the layers, Go ahead and up your stitch length so you can get somewhere. Now I'm going to stitch a couple of stitches and then back up 
And now let me get that around there. There we go. I can stitch to the other end. I'm going to come down here to the other end, get these even, and stitch all the way down. And this machine doesn't want to stitch as good as my other one. Reverse a few stitches, and then if you will pull it out and pull all of your fabrics back, you can trim it without getting anything but the thread. And when you open it out, you should have both blocks sewn together with the fringe on the front. So we'll get another one ready. Now I have the two here that I've just sewn. Here's my fringe in the center. Here's block one, block two. I have picked a block that kind of has different kitties on it. It's a little bit hard sometimes. I'm going to layer the fleece with the bad side up and the fabric with the good side up. In other words, bad side to bad side. Let me get them lined up here. This doesn't take long when you get used to it. So I have them side by side. I'm going to flip them back to back again and sew this seam. And I like to keep adding this way because that way I can make sure my prints uh, are different. If you start sewing them together in twos, you may wind up with two together that are just alike. Here are my first three blocks. We've got this fringe in between and on the back We've got these nice seams here. So the whole black back will be green. We don't have to worry when we sew our next uh, row together as much where they join. If it's all green, you're not going to see the intersection too much. But it's not hard to match them, so we're going to try to match those two. So we're ready for number four, so I'll get that together. I have row one done here. One, let's see, let me get over here. One, two, three, four, five six, seven blocks. So we have all seven of our blocks together for row one. We've made sure all of our cats are in the same orientation. Now if you use a pattern that it doesn't care, you know, doesn't make a difference, you don't have to worry about that. I do want you to notice the end of row one, everything's still loose. When we sew it to row two, we'll catch this side. But this side and this side will remain loose. When we get to the very end of the quilt and we get all the rows together, we're going to stitch up the side and down this side and do all four edges that way. And that will uh, confine our edges and we don't have to bind this quilt. So that's going to be very nice. It's going to be done before you know it. So we'll get busy and get row two started. While I'm working on row two, I wanted to remind you of a couple of things. One of them is that um, when you choose your thread for sewing this together, match the top fabric. We don't have to worry about the fleece because it's on the bottom and the seams are frontwards, so we're not going to see the thread on that side. The only row we worry about that is the very last row where we sew around the outside edge and then we'll match the bottom thread to the fleece and the top red to the top. The other thing, when you're sewing, make sure your fringes don't get flipped back underneath where you sew them in a position they should not be. Just kind of check and make sure everything is out to the edge as it should be, and then get busy sewing. I, I swapped to my other machine that has the built-in walking foot and it's going much quicker. So if you have a machine like that, these are just so easy to make. So um, check your machine and see if it has that function. My first two rows are ready, row one and row two. They're going to line up with their seams. But to sew them together, I'm going to get the corners of the fabric and fleece even on each one. 
make sure your pattern is in the right position. All my kitty cats are, are um, in the right position. Hopefully I didn't sew any on their heads. I'm going to take the two rows, just like we did the other squares. Now don't make this hard. I'm going to put row, if this is row one, row one on the bottom, row two on the top, and match those corners just like we did before. When we sew them together long ways, when you get to one of these seams, we're going to match them up just like we always do, but we're going to flip the top one up and the bottom one down just like we always do. Flip one seam one way and one the other and match them and then work to the next one matching and work all the way to the end until we get to the end we'll match it and sew off and we'll have row one to row two. I have row one underneath and row two on the top as long as you've got one on the bottom and one on the top. Get that notch on the top even and bring your Press your foot over so that you can start them out at the right position. And just like we did before, take a few stitches and then back up to tack them good. Now, I've done a few stitches. My needle is down. I'm going to come down here to the other end. Make sure my fleece and my fabric are lined up on top and bottom, make sure they're not flipped behind. And I'm going to match my seams and I'm going to point the top seam up and the bottom seam down. Now when I get close to it, I take these top fringes and pull them apart just so that I don't sew them in a big clump. I'm across that one. I'm going to match this next one up. Just visually look under there. Make sure your fringes aren't flipped backwards. Make sure your fleece is out to the edge of your fabric. Get all that lined up. Doesn't take much. close. I'll pull the bottom few fringe apart where I think I'm going to go across. Get that one that way. And I'm just going to continue down it until I get all of row one sewn to all of row two. And it should be seven blocks each. So we'll get that done. I'm down to the last block on row, the first rows, sewing them together. I'm going to sew to where I would have stopped normally or started normally, almost to where that seam would have gone in the other direction. Don't sew all the way off. And then I'm going to pull my threads up and cut them, cut the other half, the other end. And we've got two rows together now. So we're getting towards a quilt. I have the first three rows done. They're looking real good. They're going to fluff up real nice. And so far all my kitty cats are in the same direction, so I'm doing good. I'll keep sewing these together till we get all nine rows. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven across, and we need nine down. So a couple more rows and we'll be halfway. I have the first six rows done. As you can tell, is shaping up very nicely. I have all my little kitty cats in there aimed in the same direction and my fluff here is going to look really good between them. It's going to bring the green of the grass out and separate each square very nicely. So we'll get the last three rows done now. We have all seven rows done across and nine rows down so our quilt top is finished as far as that. We need to sew around the edges so I'll get it down and I'll show you how to do that next. We have our quilt complete except for the row around the edge. I've changed my bobbin thread to this dark green so that it won't show on the bottom. I'm going to sew along the outside edge keeping my bottom fleece even with my top fabric. Get those edges even. 
Sometimes they crawl around on you. And we're going to start sewing and we're going to take a few stitches, back stitch, and then just sew the two layers together at a little bit tighter stitch than we had before. And we'll go all the way around the quilt doing this and that will uh, firm up our edges. When I get to these seams, I just part them again, go between them, get that next one ready. Just takes a little time, but we need to secure these edges. I've sewn all around the edges now, and our quilt top is finished except for the last step. We need to wash it and dry it and let all of this fluff up very nicely. The more you wash and dry it, the fluffier it will get. When you wash and dry it, you need to be very careful. Some people take these to laundromats to do. I do them in my washer and dryer, but I just know to check the lint filters frequently. It just every couple of minutes I'll go by and check it. And the first time you get most of it out of it. But all of these little fringes are going to just get fluffy and, and look really good. And we'll have all our kitty cats here. This will be a wonderful quilt for a child. Um, they can snuggle up and watch TV or movies and just, just feel warmth and love. Our quilt's basically finished now. I have it on the wall upside down, but that won't matter. This quilt is 7 across and 9 down. So 9 times 7 is 63. If you wanted to make this quilt bigger, I want to tell you, now I used eight and a half inch squares. So I could only get four squares per width of fabric cut. So since I could get four per width of fabric cut, I divided by 63, the, the 63 that I needed by four. And it was 16 strips that I would need to cut. And each one of them needed to be eight and a half inches and then add a little bit so you'll have extra. On the fleece, the fleece was 60 inches wide. And I could get six out of a width of fabric. But I had to cut them a little bit bigger. So six into 63 is 10 plus three or 11 strips. So you need 11 strips, eight and a half inches wide of your fleece to cut the fleece squares. Now. If you're going to use the cutter of the AccuCut machine, you need to probably go by nine and a half on those because you have to have a little overlap on there. So multiply it by nine and a half. But if you want to know how many squares for a bigger one, that is the basic concept of figuring out. Figure out how many you can get from a width of fabric and divide that into the total number you want and see how many strips to cut. Then you know that many strips however many inches wide, eight and a half, and multiply that, and it tells you how much yardage you need. I have a nice snuggly cat quilt now. I do want to tell you that when you make these, they're a little bit heavy because of the fleece that's in them. Um, don't try to put more batting in there. Some people will use cotton on top and the bottom and then have the batting in there. Cut the batting smaller so that it will fit inside, and you may have to stitch an X to hold it in place. You might want to use the fusible batting to keep it in place long enough to work with it and then sew on it. Sometimes people like to use flannel on them. Um, however you do it, it, they're just nice cuddly quilts and to me the less work the better because you can make more and give them away. I want to talk to you about something different now so I'll get that ready. A lot of times people think they can't make a quilt because they don't have a real expensive machine. This is my newest treadle that I have found and I haven't worked on it very much. I'll probably polish up the cabinets some, but not a lot. Don't refinish them. Um, you can redo them or just use them as they are. Um, Ruby is already working very hard helping me work on a log cabin quilt. These are great for relaxation. When you treadle them, they're just very comforting. There are a few things I'd like to tell you about the treadles. Um, one of them is the belt. Many people have a treadle, but it won't work. It needs a belt. 
You can get those off of the internet, just Google, and it'll probably take you to eBay, but a lot of people sell on eBay, and you can find the parts for these machines. There are a few things I would like to tell you about machines so you'll know what you're looking at. Um, if it is meant to be a treadle, it's going to have a wheel with the belt uh, groove in it, and it will go down to the bottom of the table where you can treadle with your feet. Um, one other thing about it, this one has an old, old tension mechanism. I'm not sure how old it is. I haven't found the number on it yet, but I'm eager to find out. It's a new home model Ruby. I do know that much. Um, if you have a machine with a metal plate that runs front to back like this, usually, let's see if I can get it off for you. Right. Okay, usually that means you have a bullet show. And as you so you'll see the bullet come back and forth. That's instead of a bobbin. So this one is old enough to have a bullet show. It's also got a tension mechanism I had never seen before. This next machine is a Singer Red Eye. I got the machine head off of eBay and I got the cabinet at an old antique place. We had to dig through things and we found three different machines there. If you'll notice, um, it has the red eye decal. Uh, it looks like eyes on there, and it's called a Singer 66 Red Eye. The bobbin slide plate is to the left, and it does actually have a bobbin in there. So if it has the slide plate over here, or you can't see it, it may be underneath. It's usually a bobbin. And if it has the long metal right here, it's a bullet shuttle. Now, this one has a different way to wind the bobbin than the other one because it is a bobbin. The other one had, um, it looks like the axle for a little car or truck that your child plays with uh, that goes in that bullet shuttle. This one has a, a tension disc like we're used to. Um, a lot of times they'll have drawers with lots of old things in it. And I leave the stuff in there. I don't try to clean out the cabinets too much. That's history and it's part of it. And I just like to leave it alone. I, I don't like to bother it. It was very important to somebody at some time. The last machine that I will show you is a domestic brand. A lot of different companies made machines trying to copy the Singer um, and to come out with their own machine. And it was put out uh, as competition, but usually Sears and Roebuck sold them. But it's called a domestic. You have Franklin's. You have a lot of different ones. Um, it's still got the belt, still got the big wheel. Here's where you're bobbing is wound. And let's see if I can find you a bobbin here. I don't see one right away. But it also has the bullet shuttle here. And unfortunately the slide plate was missing on this one. This machine could possibly be as old as 1863, but without that slide plate with the actual year on it, I'll never know. Um, I wish he could have found it, but he could not. Also, it's called a coffin top machine because it did not go down into the cabinet like a lot of them. It had a cover for it to cover it up. So don't let the cost of your machine stop you. I piece a lot of my quilts on my treadles and you can't tell it. I'm working on this one on the treadle you just saw. It's going to be a beautiful log cabin when I get it done. So it doesn't always mean that you need an expensive machine. It's not the machine, it's the operator. So we've learned how easy it is to throw one of these uh, quilts together. There's no reason you can't do a few of them for nieces, nephews, grandkids, or even charity quilts. Until I see you again, happy quilting.